What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about three different types of investments that you need to own and why you need to own these three types of investments. Now, just before we get into these three types of investments that you should own, we'll be kicking this video off with a $100 giveaway, four lucky winners, one winner each week off $25. And all you have to do for a chance to win is to drop a comment below as we'll be selecting a random comment for a winner and then hop on over to my website and subscribe with your email address as that's how we'll be announcing the winners every single week. Also, if you're new to the channel and this is the first time that you're seeing me, my name is Ian. And on this channel, I talk about ways to make money, ways to save money, ways to invest your money. I talk about bank accounts, credit cards, and everything to do with personal finance. So if you like these videos and you like these topics, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to the channel with all the notifications on. That way you'll never miss the updates of when I post new videos, which is every single day on this channel. So let's now get into the three types of investments that you need to own. And the first one that we'll be talking about is real estate investments. Now you may be saying, well, Ian, what if the market crashes? What if the house prices go down? What will I do then? And that's a great question. But if we actually look at the history of the real estate market, on average, real estate has increased or appreciated in value by around 3.5 to 3.8% per year. Now, 3% may not sound like a lot, but if you actually look at the numbers, if you purchase a house for let's say $250,000 and the house actually appreciates by 3.8% per year, that is a return of around $9,500 per year. Now, these are typical returns on average year after year. If you look at the housing market right now over the past 12 months, real estate on average has been up by over 14%. In fact, if we look at different markets in the US, we can see that, for example, Austin, Texas is up by over 40%. Miami is over 25%. Phoenix, Arizona is over 24%. And so in the end, real estate always pays off to be a very good investment. So if you're watching this video and you don't yet own any real estate, the problem real estate or the problem with real estate for most people is that they're usually outpriced from this investment opportunity from earlier on because they either have no credit, they have messy credit, or they don't have the down payment required to make a purchase on any real estate property. So since we know this, you should definitely get your credit together, start working on building or rebuilding your credit and start saving for at least a 20% down payment for any investment property or any real estate that you plan on purchasing. So for example, if you think that you would want to purchase a house for $200,000, then a good rule of thumb is to save around $40,000, which would be 20% to put down on that house. And you may not need to put that 20% down, but that way you ensure that you're not outpriced of this investment opportunity. Now, $40,000 may sound like a lot of money. It may be a bit intimidating, but if you break this down, that is actually $385 saved per week over a period of just two years. So getting a side job or side hustle or business on the side can actually help you to easily save this money in two years and probably less if you can save more than $385 per week for the next 24 months. Now, the other part of this is getting your credit together because if you have a really good credit score over 700, then you may be able to qualify for a mortgage with only 3% down, which would mean that if you want to purchase a property for let's say $200,000, all you really need is a down payment of around $6,000 to get in. And this is by saving $150 per week for one year. So you can do this and you can live in this house and the value of the property will go up every single year. And you'll be paying down on the mortgage every single year. And you'll actually be building equity and wealth from this real estate property. If you're planning on using this as an investment property where you rent it out or your Airbnb, it, then you can use the Burr method. And I have a video explaining that method and how it works. And Burr actually stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. And this is a method of getting roughly 12% or more from your real estate investment property every single year while you're building equity in this property. Now, if you're still thinking about whether you should jump into real estate or not, it's a fun fact to know that 90% of the world's millionaires are invested in real estate. So if you're planning on building any significant amounts of wealth, you definitely want to consider real estate investment as a part of your portfolio. Now, the second type of investment that everyone should have is stock market investments. And this one is really good because unlike real estate where you need to save for months to years to get a down payment 
and you need to work on getting your credit right. With the stock market, you can actually get in as soon as you hit 18 years old or when you get your first job. Now, there are two types of investing. You have the passive investor and you have the active investor. And a passive investor is someone that wants the returns from the investment without having to analyze all the companies and choose some and having to go through a bunch of books and courses to learn about investing. And so passive investors usually choose index fund investing. Now, active investors, on the other hand, will go out there and they will pick individual companies companies and analyze these companies to see what the outlook of the company is for the future and the projected earnings that that company will make. So a passive investor or becoming a passive investor is really easy and becoming an active investor actually takes a lot of work. So for example, an easy way to pull this off is to get an investment app. For example, I use M1 Finance and I also use Webull. You guys can put aside some money every single week and you'll determine how much money you want to put aside. And instead of investing a lump sum of money, you invest consistently smaller amounts over a longer period of time and that way when the prices of these investments are low you get to purchase them and even when they're high you still purchase and this way your average price paid for all your investments will average out and that way you don't have to worry about timing the stock market to buy at the right time or sell at the right time. Now, this method or style of investing is also called dollar cost averaging. But remember, this only works if you consistently invest for a long period of time. So for example, if you took that $115 and you invested that every single week and you started doing this early at the age of 18 or 20 or 25 or even 30 years and you invested this money for 40 years which is considered long term and 40 for zero which is the typical working lifetime of the average person who starts a job at 25 after college and you work until you're 65, you would have amassed a portfolio or you could have a portfolio of over $1.2 million if you were able to get 12% in average on returns from an index fund by simply dollar cost averaging in. Now, this is really interesting because over these 40 years of investing $115 per week, you would have only invested $55,000 of your own money into this investment portfolio and the other $1.15 million would be from interest and compounding on this investment. Now, if you do this for 10 years, then returns are going to be significantly less. So this is why investing should be another priority for you because the longer you invest for, the more money you can make. Also, with these investment apps, you get in with as little as, or you can get in with as little as $10 or sometimes $100. You can invest any amount you want every single week. So the barrier to entry is very low and there are also a lot of incentives. So for example, if you sign up for M1 Finance right now, you can get $50 for free. If you sign up at Webull, you can get free stocks. So there's no reason for you to not take advantage of investing right now. Now, finally, the third investment that you need to make is in cash. And what I mean by this is that you need to have cash laying around at all times that you can use to take advantage of any other investment opportunities that pop up. And if you look at popular investors like Warren Buffett, for example, he has millions of dollars in cash just laying around that he can use to make investments whenever opportunities arise. And this is the main idea here. So for example, if you were investing in the stock market and you were doing dollar cost averaging, last year when the pandemic came, initially the stock market fell by around 50%. And if you had cash laying on the side and you were able to invest a lot of of cash or put a lump sum into your stock market investments, you'd be up by a lot of money in just a few weeks or a few months. So the same goes for real estate because during the pandemic, people bought real estate because of the low interest rates. And now they're very happy because the properties they bought for let's say $300,000 now being valued at over $400,000 and more. And now they can refinance, they can get a HELOC or they can sell these properties because it's a seller's market and walk away with some easy cash. And this is all because they had money laying on the side where they could afford to take advantage of the opportunities when they came. So you definitely want to budget some money to put in a high yield savings account. We could open an account at, let's say, the Voyager app and deposit some money there. We can get 9% in interest per year. And that way you always have money laying on the side where you can use it to take advantage of any investment opportunities that arise. So I want you guys to comment below and let me know what your top three investments are. Let me know if you're in the stock market, if you're in crypto, are you in real estate? Are you stacking cash on the side? Comment below and let me know what your plans are and what do you think about these three investment types now with that said be sure to check all the links down below in the description because i have links to investment apps where you guys can get free cash 
or free stocks. And I just mentioned Voyager and the Voyager app is an app or a crypto trading platform where you can buy and trade crypto. And you'll get $25 in free Bitcoin just for signing up. And they also have a US stable coin where you can get 9% in interest and there's no catch. So be sure to check out the Voyager app. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. All the best with your investments. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one.